Welcome to Sounding Board. Today's program will be a co-production of Seroptimist International of Novato and Seroptimist International of Marin County. The Seroptimist mission is to improve the lives of women and girls through programs leading to social and economic empowerment. Today we'll be discussing workers' compensation fraud and auto insurance fraud, consumer beware. My name is Linda Wutong, and it is my pleasure to introduce to you Nicole Pantaleo, who is a Deputy District Attorney from Marin County. She's the coordinator for the Insurance Fraud Division, and Captain John Argello, who is the Benicia Regional Office of the California Department of Insurance. Welcome, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Captain, I think I'm going to start with you. First of all, where do you work and what do you do? So I am employed with the California Department of Insurance, okay. the enforcement branch. Okay. I oversee the Benicia Regional Office, which oversees the 11 Bay Area counties. Okay. Essentially, we handle from San Francisco all the way to the Oregon border. So there's quite a bit of territory that we cover. I would say so. And what would you like to share with our viewers today? Well, I'd like to first thank you for inviting us to come down and speak with our you today. Pleasure. I think something that the public is not necessarily aware of is when you hear insurance fraud, I don't think that the public recognizes that they can be victims of insurance fraud. Right. And can you talk to us about maybe some of the scams that are out there? Absolutely. One of the most prevalent scams is auto insurance fraud. Okay. And every day that you or myself or Nicole are out driving, we potentially could become victims. Mm -hmm. There are individuals, groups, and in some cases, organized crime groups that are out prowling the streets, city streets, the freeways, shopping center, parking lots, looking for those drivers that are unsuspecting, that are not paying complete attention to their driving, right. and essentially targeting those individuals so that they can file huge insurance claims, property damage claims for any property damage that might occur to their vehicles, and then the pain and suffering the bodily injury claims. So what type of scam do you call this? So the most prevalent ones that we see and the easiest ones to, uh, I guess, for these suspects to engage in is the single vehicle uh, uh, collision. And a collision or stage collision? A stage collision, thank okay. you. Okay, sure. One of the easiest ones to uh, uh, engage in is the what we call the sudden stop or the panic stop okay. accident. What the suspect will do is they will target an individual with a well-maintained vehicle, a nicer vehicle, a vehicle that they will feel comfortable will have some insurance right. and a high, a high coverage insurance. Okay. If the driver is not paying strict attention to their driving, right. then they target that person. Okay. And what they will do is, on occasion, they will do a brake check. And what the brake check is, they'll pull in front of the person, tap their brakes, and see whether or not the person recognizes that they are tapping their brakes. And then when the opportunity presents itself, the suspect will slam on their brakes and then the unsuspecting driver crashes into them. And we all know here in California, if you rear end someone, right. you are 100% at fault. Right. So what can you do if you're involved in a stage collision? So several things that you can do to protect yourself. In fact, when we do outreach and training, some of the people that I speak to after I do the training say, my goodness, I was involved in that sort of accident. And I may have been a victim of a stage collision, had no idea. Nowadays, everyone carries a smartphone. And one of the things I highly encourage is that if you've been involved in an accident, a collision, immediately take photographs of the vehicle. Okay. Your vehicle, as well as the other vehicle. <coughs> okay, okay. The more pictures, the better. Okay. Don't take one or two photos of the areas of the damage. Mm -hmm. Take photos of the entire vehicle. Because sometimes what we see in these scams is that if the victim doesn't necessarily take the photos of the entire vehicle, what they will do at a later date is enhance the oh. damage to their vehicle. Of course. So when they file a claim with their insurance company, what may have started off as very minor, let's say a quarter panel damage sure. or damage to the rear bumper, yeah. now they take it to a body shop and there is damage on the entire vehicle. And should they take also pictures of their car as well? Absolutely. Okay. And I say the more photos, the better. Okay. Take photos of your own vehicle. 
take photos of the adverse vehicle, get gr good identification, right. get insurance company information, and if there's any witnesses in the area, get their names, get their names, and get them to provide a statement if they can, either at that time or if not at a later time that they can either uh, write a statement and or you can provide their information to the insurance company so the insurance company can then later contact them and take a statement about the facts and of the accident. And should you report it to the police? Absolutely. One of the things these groups will do is they will try to intimidate the person. Unfortunately, our elderly, there there is a large group that will target the elderly because they know that they will cover have good coverage, good insurance, and the vehicles that they drive are normally nicer vehicles, vehicles that are well maintained, and they're potentially easily intimidated. So what they will do is, in their vehicles, they may have one or two extra passengers, mm -hmm. and then they'll flag the person, try to get them to pull over, and then immediately try to intimidate the person into signing something saying that they were 100% at fault, or maybe try to encourage them that they could resolve the claim right there by going to an ATM machine, withdrawing funds, and settling the claim there. Um, so if you have the ability to call the police department, call the police department. Immediately. Unfor unfortunately, in some cases, if there's no injuries, the police might not respond to the scene. You might have the police tell you to pull over to a safe area, okay. exchange information, and they might not necessarily send someone out. But then should you go to the, your local police department and make a report as soon as possible? Absolutely. It's, okay. it's very easy to drive to the local police department and file what's called a counter report. Okay. And basically it's just memorializing the collision okay. in a police report and then highly encourage that at the first opportunity that you have to file the claim with your insurance company. And if you feel that there was something suspect, right. that, that saying, if something just didn't feel right about right. the situation, report that to your insurance company. If you feel that you've been a victim, let your insurance company know that because the insurance companies are required by law to refer any suspected fraudulent claims to my agency. Uh -huh. And then together we investigate those cases along with the local district attorney offices. Okay, now you mentioned body shops. Uh, does fraud happen in body shops? Un unfortunately it does. The, the thing that is very nice though is that it's a very small percentage. There are so many reputable great auto body repair mm -hmm. shops. And fortunately it's just a small percentage of those shops that are engaged in fraud. But that is the other, uh, I guess, thing that the, and the consumer needs to be aware of, is that if it sounds too good to be true, it might not be. Well, for example, um, can you discuss repair network and choice, direct repair network and choice, and the types of damage and how that might be involved in scams? Absolutely. Some of the more prevalent auto body repair <clears throat> scams that we see is the unsuspecting insured, the victim, will take their vehicle to a body shop and this is before the insurance company has had the opportunity to inspect the vehicle. Mm -hmm. The body shop, either the manager or one of the employees, will coerce the insured to leave the vehicle there and, and essentially tell the insured, we will handle the entire claim for you, no need to worry, mm -hmm. you know, just leave your car here. The person leaves the car there and the next thing you know, the body shop is enhancing, adding damage to the vehicle in areas where there wasn't damage and that is in an effort to increase the property damage to the car. We had a case, it was in the Bay Area, where a very unsuspecting and very trustworthy person took their vehicle to an auto body repair shop. She had yet to file her insurance company. The manager advised her, no need to worry, we will handle the entire property damage claim for you. She left the vehicle not having taken any photos. The body shop subsequently enhance the damage around the entire vehicle. So when we went out and we interviewed this witness and she was very cooperative and we showed her photos of what the vehicle looked like after it had been inspected, she was absolutely shocked to find out that there was all this damage on the entire area of, of the vehicle where there had been no property damage. Wow. Um, how about overestimating or the types of damage that they might 
do this type of particular scam on. Exactly. And, and it goes back to if you feel that you're being intimidated, mm -hmm. when you file your claim with the insurance company, the insurance company has what are called direct repair networks. Okay. And those are auto body shops that the insurance company works with. Okay. And so long as you own your car, the insurance company will stand by the repair work that's done on okay. your vehicle. Right. Now, there's no law that requires the insured take their vehicle to the direct repair facility. It's just some insurance companies will recommend some body shops that they stand by and have worked with in the past. However, if you would like to take your vehicle to another body shop. You have that choice. You have that mm -hmm. choice. Okay. One of the things that I would recommend to those folks that are looking at taking their vehicles to a body uh, repair shop is you can go onto the website, the Bureau of Automotive Repair, and you can do a search on the license, the body shop, and see if there's been any disciplinary actions on okay. the shop. Or if they're even validly licensed. Exactly. If the license is indeed valid, that would be your first step. Okay. Nicole. Hey, I just wanted to ask the captain a question, just going back to the um, sure. collisions. You talked about the start and stop. Um, did you bring with you today any other examples of different types of collisions as well? Because I just want the viewers to really be sure. aware of what to what to watch out for sure. on, on the streets. Sure. A absolutely. Unfortunately, there's four or five different scams that are out there with the okay. auto collision, uh, uh, stage collisions. Uh, one of the other prevalent ones is called the swoop and squat. And basically that swoop and, swoop and squat. That's what I thought you said. And <laughs> that's the technical term. <laughs> okay. And it is one of those collisions where it can be anywhere from two suspect vehicles up to four or five suspect vehicles. And basically, again, what they do is they target someone who is not paying strict attention to their driving. And essentially, they box the person in. A vehicle will swoop, will basically cut in front of one of the vehicles, that's one of the co-conspirators, who then slams on their brakes, and then the unsuspecting driver then crashes in, rear ends uh, the uh, one of the suspects, right. and they are blocked in. So it's a scoop, and the squat is the braking, okay. and that's where that got its name. Okay, and then what is the purpose of the other people? Just to keep that person blocked in until it, they can get a waiver, or exactly. Right. So wow, what they okay. will do is they will block the person in, so there's no is this as I call it the escape route for the right. insured. Right. There's no place for them to go. They can't veer to the left or to the right. Okay. And then also these adverse drivers then come forward and say, "I saw the entire collision, mm -hmm. and this person was at fault," and then they. Uh, provide statements corroborating the story of our suspect. Rent a witness. Exactly. And probably they already have their statements ready. The ink is already dried, right? right. Exactly. So that's another step that folks okay. can use to protect themselves. If that if someone comes forward and is the very, as I call it, the very aggressive witness that says the victim is at fault and right. they can provide, a, get that person's information as well. If they, if you can provide, if you can get identification from that person, you know, write that identification down, provide that information to your insurance company as well. And the one thing I will warn is if you feel that there is any sort of danger or again that you're being intimidated and the people refuse to give you identification, mm -hmm. don't push the issue. Again, call the police department. If you can uh, get the police to roll out, great. But if not, don't get into any sort of confrontation mm -hmm. with these folks because some of these groups, especially the organized crime groups, are in fact very, very organized and they do this for a living the way that you and I would get up in the morning and earn an honest living. And there's no telling what sometimes they would be capable of doing. Okay. Um, what are the other types of scams that you want so to So one of the other ones, it involves no vehicle. It's the pedestrian uh, accident. And we normally see these in a shopping center or a parking lot. And what will happen is if your unsuspecting driver is making a right-hand turn and they're looking to their left to make sure that there's no vehicles coming, right. the suspect, who is a pedestrian, will walk out in front of the unsuspecting driver and then normally what they will do is they will hit the front of the hood with their hand very loudly, fall to the ground as if they are in excruciating pain. As if they've been hit. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, because the unsuspecting driver was looking to their left right. as the person steps in front of their vehicle to the right, they have no idea that the person actually hit the hood with their hand and then fell. And so that, that is a big one. And what we see with the scheme is with that is the suspects will normally try to strong arm or intimidate the unsuspecting person into going to an ATM, 
asking them to withdraw some funds that they would settle the claim right there for a few hundred dollars. Any other scams that you'd like to tell yes, us about? Yes, there, there are two other ones. One is called the drive down. And what the drive down one is, is normally it happens on the freeway. And basically you are driving along and one of the other vehicles, a, a suspect, will pull alongside and basically drive down the side of your vehicle. And then they will normally have one to two passengers in their car, which will then cooperate that you made an unsafe lane change. And then they filed the bodily injury, pain and suffering mm -hmm. claims. So that's the drive down. Okay. And then there's also the right of way uh, ah. uh, uh, scam. And that one is the, as I call it, the overzealous person who is uh, giving you the right of way. So they want you to go ahead, you know, make the turn. And, and you think they're being nice. And you absolutely think they're being nice. And as soon as they yield the right of way and you engage in your turn, they accelerate their vehicle into your vehicle. And then the story is, you did not yield the right of way, and they have two or three witnesses in their vehicle that are going to corroborate that story, and then everybody winds up fi wow. filing a pain and suffering bodily injury claim. Are there any areas within California that these are more predominant? Unfortunately, they're everywhere. Everywhere. They're everywhere. Right. I've worked for the department for several years, and I've seen them in every county. It is. Uh, prevalent in cities, in the counties, freeways, city streets, shopping center parking lots. Unfortunately, there are those folks out there that prey on those unsuspecting folks that are not paying attention to their driving. Mm -hmm. After having worked for this agency, I am now the safest driver. <laughs> and you're probably driving the cheapest car that you can find, right? Because that sounds like that's part of the profile. Right. Absolutely. And the other thing, they look for those stickers, the insurance company stickers that are on the bumpers. If they see an insurance company sticker on a bumper, it's oh, basically saying, better. I have insurance. And, okay. And so I've always, when I do the outreach and training, I suggest if you have that, rip that sticker off of your bumper. Okay. Absolutely. What a wealth of information you are. Nicole, uh, speaking of checking licenses, yes. um, how can homeowners check a license for a contractor they want to hire? Well, that's really important. As everyone knows here in Marin, we have a lot of remodeling that gets done yes, on our houses. Do. So um, one thing that I think is really uh, key is that homeowners have to uh, really try and do their best at being responsible citizens, too, in, in this county. Um, and a cu couple things that ho homeowners can, can do is look at the CSLB uh, website. And I brought that with me today for your viewers. That's the Contracting Licensing Board website. Um, and you can call their number as well and put the name of the contractor that you want to hire in there and they will tell you on the website if that if that contractor is licensed it just takes a matter of seconds also you can contact the california department of insurance um, as well i brought their website with me too um, you know to see if somebody is carrying uh, workers compensation insurance which is really important um, i did bring with me today linda as well for your uh, viewers local business uh, licensing authority, uh, you should be contacting them, um, your local building inspection depart, uh, department. All the cities in Marin have different rules. And so when you're going to remodel your, your house, you really want to check with your city to make sure that you're getting a proper permits um, because it can cause you, cause you to be fined and give you a lot of headaches later. Um, and if you believe um, that there, you know, are some violations of law that are going on, you know, a lot of times these are criminal charges. You should be contacting your criminal um, division, um, which would be, uh, it can be your local law enforcement agency, um, which is the various uh, police depart departments. And I did uh, bring a list of every agency that's in Marin County. Okay. Um, as well, of course, as the um, Marin County District Attorney's Office. Um, Anyone at any time um, that you know has any questions can feel free to call one of our inspectors, Gene Fahey or Jack Cooper. We'll be more than happy to assist if they believe that there is fraud going on in uh, the con in the contracting world. And one thing that I think is really important, um, you know, there's a lot of pressure here in Marin, I think, to to try and get things done and, and to try and save money. And this is an extremely expensive 
County. So and so bidding becomes very important, doesn't Bidding is really important, it? right? Yeah. And so what happens is sometimes people think, you know what, I'm just going to try and cut some cut some corners here, right? So they've gone to the city, they've, you know, tried to look at, you know, what's it going to cost for this permit and for mm -hmm. that permit, and, mm -hmm. you know, they just bought this house, and this house was over a million dollars, and, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever it might be, you know, and it's, it's very, very expensive to live here. And so people might think, well, you know, it might be worth it for me just to hire somebody um, off the street. Or you know? who gives you the lowest bid. Or who gives you the lowest bid. And so what are the problems? Like, I have a contractor. Sure. And, and one gives a phenomenally low bid. Right. What well, should I be suspicious that, of? You should be really suspicious because, number one, you should get more than one bid. That's always a good business rule, right? Because you want to have comp you want to have competition and see what, you know, what is out there. But number two, it's not just about the lowest bid. You want to make sure that who you're hiring is properly licensed. Because if they're not properly licensed, they're committing a criminal offense. This is not an issue for civil court. This is a criminal offense. Our office will prosecute them. And we do stings around the county with our investigators, with the, depart with the Department of Insurance and with other organizations and, a and agencies throughout the state. So if we come onto your property and your contractor is not properly licensed and he's got 10 men on the roof that aren't insured, guess what? You're going to get a stop order. It could be pouring rain and there could be a big hole in your house. That's, We're going to do a stop order and yes, everything yeah. is going to stop. That's not a pleasant um, thing. And that's not a good experience, right? The other issue is that people can get seriously hurt that are not properly monitored, that are not properly employed, and that um, are not properly insured. And there's a couple of uh, huge problems with that. Number one, um, and I'm not here to give legal advice, I'm not permitted to do so, but buyer beware because you could have civil liability. And what I mean by that is if the roofer falls off the roof, for example, mm -hmm. just giving you a hypothetical here, and his employer was not properly insured with workers' compensation in insurance, you know, that employee could turn around and sue you as the homeowner. Now, whether or not your umbrella policy from your home insurance is going to cover that, I don't know. You know, it all depends on your carrier, it depends on your contract, it depends on your terms. Who knows? You could be on the hook for that whole thing. Let's talk quickly about trafficking and sure. perhaps the use of people who are not legally here. Absolutely. Um, one of the other big issues, too, is that not only do we have unfair competition for businesses that are following the law, paying their taxes, paying their insurance, and doing the right thing and you know trying to contribute to our community when they're trying to bid against people who are cheating, but then we also have the issue of really exploited workers. And we have cases, um, you know, I've talked to civil attorneys, I've talked to people in the community who have friends. I have known of people who are so scared to come forward and I try to tell them, please tell your friend to call the district attorney's office. You know, sure. we are law enforcement, we want to help them. They are scared to death to come forward. They have been dropped off at Marin General. They are injured. Um, they have been, tr you know, treated with no workers' compensation. Um, they have been told if they tell anybody that, you know, ICE is going to get called on them and they'll be deported. Perhaps consequences for their family? Absolutely. That they, we've had people, I've heard stories of people being assaulted physically. Um, and, you know, this is human trafficking. Um, this is illegal. It is a felony. It is very, very serious if people are being into forced labor. They, we've had cases where around the state where pe people are not being paid minimum wage, right. where they're not allowed to leave, where they're being housed in, in basements. I mean, these are horror stories. So when you just pick up people who are not properly employing their employees and are getting them off the street or you don't know where they're getting them, you don't know what the backstory is. And you might be thinking, I'm saving a thousand bucks or I'm saving a few hundred dollars, right. but you might be contributing really to Somebody's human trafficking. Conditions. True. And that's very, very serious. And I know Marin is such a wonderful county of consciousness that this is not the type of county where the citizens would tolerate that kind Absolutely of not. Uh, really serious felony behavior. So I um, would encourage you all to really think about that um, the next time that you want to remodel your house and try and make a, con a, con a conscientious decision. There you go. What last minute thoughts would you like to leave with the audience? Captain, Nicole? 
Well, what I would suggest, because again, insurance fraud is something that we don't necessarily think we might be victims of. Right. The insurance companies, they see the insurance companies as deep pockets, but who does it hurt? These people have no issues with staging a collision, which could result in serious bodily injury to these poor victims that have no idea that they're being scoped out. Right. So be very careful when driving. If you feel like you've been the victim of a, a stage collision, call the police department, report it to the insurance company, let your insurance company know that you think you've been the victim of a, a stage collision, and then they will refer to our agency. Let and me ask you one quick question. You said to get identification. If you're dealing with some people from organized crime and like they have you surrounded, is it really wise to give them identification which may show where you live? Or do you want to drive to a safe place and meanwhile get on the phone and call the police? And I'm glad you bring that up. Very important. And because these groups operate morning, noon, and night. And so in the evening, or for that matter, even during the day, if you're in an isolated area, drive to a safe area. Drive to a public space. Drive to an area where there's lots of people, lots of witnesses. And if you, again, if you feel that you're being intimidated, you know, ask one of the witnesses, ask somebody who's walking by, you know, get get a name, get somebody that can stand there with you until the police department arrives. Meanwhile, don't turn over your identification. Exactly. Okay. You know, at some point you will need to exchange the information, but again, just be very careful. Thank you both for being on Sounding Board. It's been a pleasure talking to both of you. You've given such a wealth of information in such a short thank period you. of time. I would also like to thank the Seroptimist International of Novato crew who are back in the sound room over there. Thank you very much for your help. Uh, we couldn't do this produce, production without you. You can see the archived uh, Sounding Board shows on the Seroptimist International of Novato website. And we'd also like to give special thanks for the use of the studio to the Buck Institute for Research of Aging. Thank you, and have a good day.